If you will play from a copy of a tune and a choppy, you'll get all my applause. And that is perfectly because I want to listen to Thank you, everybody, for coming today. As you can see, we're going to be talking about Rabbit Teeth 101, so kind of the basics. And let me go ahead and get started. So rabbits are herbivores, so which basically means that they are vegetarians. And they have uh, four large front teeth that we, you know, can always see very easily. But they also have two tiny little peg teeth behind those um, upper incisors. And that's what the peg teeth are what differentiates rabbits from rodents. Rodents do not have peg teeth. Uh, like rats, guinea pigs, chinchillas, they do not have peg teeth. So that, that's why they're, they're rodents and rabbits have peg teeth, so they're not considered rodents. So in addition to the incisors, um, rabbits have <clears throat> 22 back teeth, the cheek teeth or molar teeth, six on top, five on the bottom, and they're very long with the majority of the tooth below the gum line. So I guess I do have a pointer here. Okay, is this going to work? That's weird. Okay, so I can go like this. <laughs> I can use the uh, old-fashioned pointer. So as you can see, so they have very, very long teeth with a large portion of it is below the gum line, below the jaw, and in the bone of the jaw. Okay, all of these teeth are constantly growing, so they need to constantly wear down. They will grow from the bottom up into the mouth and from the top here down into the mouth, and then they're going to wear here in the middle. If you notice here, there's a certain angle at which they meet, and so that's important to note what the normal angle is of those molar teeth. And then they're just going to wear down. That's why it's so important for them to have a lot of coarse, fibrous foods to wear down their teeth. So... So, first, we want to do a dental exam. Usually, we start off with a conscious, awake rabbit. Now, it would be nice if we could just say, yes, they are, and take a look at their mouth, but yeah, they're not going to do that. So, we can evaluate the incisors here. We want to make sure they're nice and straight across there. They do have this little faint ridging down the center, which is good, which is normal. And then, we also need to try to do a side view to make sure that those incisors are scissoring normally. So, to look at the molars can be very challenging on an awake rabbit. And so we will commonly use this um, instrument called a speculum. Some people will also use the otoscope uh, cone to look in their mouth. And you can see just gently holding the rabbit and fitting it um, through the lips and trying to look at the molars. And then we usually can easily see the first or second molars on each arcade, but only in really good rabbits can we see further back. And so so with a, certainly an ideal thing would be a, an anesthetized or sedated exam on every rabbit every year, but that gets expensive and what if they're not healthy enough for that? And so really what we're doing is when whatever teeth we can see, whether it's 25% or 50% of the molars, we'll judge are the heights normal? Are the angles normal? Are the teeth white, yellow, brown? Is there drool? Is there odor? Is there pain? Um, and so we're just trying to judge from the teeth that we can see if they look good and if the rabbit is not having any dental signs, then we just kind of assume the rest of the teeth should be okay. But again, we, we just can't get a real thorough exam on an awake rabbit. So then there's the anesthetized dental exam. And so there's kind of two ways to get them asleep enough to do it. And one is to, if you're going to anesthetize, you can just gas them down, basically, which a lot of vets will do. And they, have, they just hold the mask over their nose and, they <laughs> and fall asleep. But it can be very stressful for them. And there's no pain relief when you're doing it that way. There's no control if they have trouble breathing or if their blood pressure drops. And uh, it's certainly if it's very fast, then they should be okay. And hundreds of vets do it. 
but I believe in, in being more careful whenever you're dealing with anesthesia because they're not, sometimes they're not breathing well on their own, um, their blood pressure can drop, so you know, we've had rabbits die just from anesthesia. So I like to be completely prepared and do it very carefully where we put an intravenous catheter in and we give them fluid support during the procedure. Um, so we keep, we monitor their blood pressure, keep their blood pressure up, we monitor their temperature, heart rate, breathing very closely. We put a breathing tube down their throat to make sure that they stay breathing. Um, we give them pain medications, relaxing medications beforehand, and we and we have a, um, a monitor that monitors all of this stuff. Plus, we usually have two very experienced technicians standing and monitoring. So we're very very careful whenever we anesthetize. And so for um, once we get them anesthetized, then we have them on. We call it the rack. And so in that way we can really open up their mouth, and then we also have a speculums that can pull their cheeks to the side so that we can get a better look. And here's kind of a close-up. We can start to see the molars here. Here's a better picture. This is actually from a, using a scope, but you can see all of these teeth better. And then here's a picture, um, regular, you know, you can see all of those upper molars. So then we can really get in there, look at all the teeth. We can see if they're loose. We can see if there's a spike. Sometimes they'll have a spike way, way in the back, and you just can't see that on an awake or sedated rabbit. So if we have a rabbit who's got intermittent um, appetite loss, um, or is moving his mouth funny, um, is dropping food, things like that. Even if we don't see anything on a wake exam, sometimes we just go ahead and put him under anesthesia for a more thorough exam. So, and here it's hard to tell, but this side is pretty normal, and this side has some little spikes towards the tongue, and it has little spikes towards the cheek. Okay, and because of the angle of the teeth, that's how they're going to usually have a sharp edge, is the uppers get the sharp edge towards the cheek, the lowers get the sharp edge towards the tongue. Okay, now the edges are supposed to be pretty sharp in general because they're chewing, but if they're sharp and normal, they'll be like this. If they're sharp and pointed towards the tongue, that's where it starts to hurt. Okay, x-rays, radiographs can be very informative. Um, it's not necessarily going to show us those little tiny spikes that you can see on oral exam. Sometimes on this view you can kind of see it, but still you've got overlap of a lot of other teeth. And this is the view of them straight on. And this is a skull for comparison so we can see, you know, there's only a little bit of the tooth above the gum line and then most of the tooth root is underneath. Okay, and what we look for is we want to see that those incisors are scissoring normally. Okay, and here's a close up. Also, you can see how the lower incisors should be contacting between the upper incisor and the peg. So in a lot of cases, rabbits will have m like normal looking uh, molars, but then the lower incisor is hitting the upper, even just a little bit of the back edge. And that, it's very, very subtle sign, easy to miss if you're not looking for it carefully. And so that is telling us that their molars are a little too long their, or their incisors are, are out, of, out of wax. So, so that's a, a subtle sign, but it is very important to note. What we look at is we look at that. We want to make, you know what, I actually have a picture coming up. Sorry. <laughs> Go into that. Whoops. Okay, here's a picture. So... There's a, uh, what you do is you're basically checking to see if everything is well aligned. You want to make sure that the angle of occlusion or the level of occlusion is normal and you're not, your teeth aren't angled like this where the first lowers are, are elevated um, no more than they should be. So you can judge it with the line from the back of the incisors to their, basically their ear drum. And then this area here, it's called a diastema. And that's actually like in horses, they have the same thing. That's where the bit will sit. And so you want that to be a bullet shape. And what happens is, is if the jaw is if the molars are too long, the jaws will be spread apart, you're going to lose your bullet shape, and then your incisors are going to be lower and be hitting incorrectly. So you can kind of see, you just if the molars get longer, pushes that jaw down and, and, and can affect the incisors. So 
let's see, and then other things we can do. Uh, so this is just a straight lateral x-ray is what it's called, so straight side view. We also look at the, the lower part of the j lower jaw to see if there's any bulges there, and we're looking up here to make sure that those tooth roots are not bulging up too much either. And then you can assess the nasal cavity as well as the incisor roots too. So it can be challenging because there's a lot of overlap here. You've got both sides overlapping, and so we'll do oblique x-rays where we lay them on their side and then just turn their head just a little bit, like 45 degrees, sometimes more or less depending on, on uh, what we're looking at. And that way we can really separate out, you know, that would be maybe like the left side of the lower jaw, and then we can see the right side of the upper, and we can see those roots a little bit more clearly if we're looking for a small abscess. So, and then this view is a straight up and down. Sometimes we'll get information, especially if there's an abscess of the, like the cheekbone, the lower jaw, and also we can see the, um, the inner ear area. Okay, um, sometimes we use this to check the nasal cavity. Other way, other things that we can do to get more information is a CT scan. Now, certainly, if you have a CT scanner at your practice, then, you know, yeah, you might get a lot more information on your CT than on x-rays. And sometimes after doing a whole bunch of x-rays, the lateral, the obliques, it almost adds up to the same thing as a CT. So it is very detailed, um, So, but you still have to have somebody who's good at reading them. So I've been doing x-rays forever, and so yes, I'd love a CT, but I can read what I need to off of a x-ray when it comes to teeth. When it comes to the nasal cavity, then you really do need a CT scan. But what's really cool about CT scans these days also is you can do a 3D image and you know, rotate it around and get a better look at everything that's going on. And these are normals. These are all normals. I want to listen to, 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 I want